talking about the flyback topology and how it operates. And we're going to assume that it's operating in continuous conduction mode and is average steady state. Here's the topology. There is a switch down here, a diode in this position, the input voltage, and the output is a resistor load. The important component is the coupled inductor, and this is an ideal transformer with an inductor in parallel. For the coupled inductor, there is a turns ratio of n, which is defined as n2, the secondary side turns, divided by n1, the primary side turns. Remember that the primary voltage times n is equal to the secondary side voltage, or that can be rewritten as the primary side voltage is equal to the secondary side voltage divided by n, the turns ratio. Let's look at what happens when we turn switch S on. So Valerie is turning the switch on. Current is going to flow from the source through the magnetizing inductance and through switch S. So the current will flow through the magnetizing inductor in this direction. You may be thinking, well, what about the current through the coupled inductor? There's a path there, so shouldn't it be flowing there as well? Well, we have to check the input and output power of the transformer. If current is flowing into the dot, let's say, hypothetically, then it has to be coming into the dot and out of the second dot. So that means it has to flow in this direction, but we have a diode blocking both of those paths, so it cannot flow in that direction. Current cannot be flowing out of the dot, so it cannot be flowing into the dot because the powers have to match. So we know that that current is not valid and there will be no current going into the ideal transformer of the coupled inductor. There's one more current path though. We're gonna have current coming out of the capacitor and going to the load because that's our output capacitor holding up the output voltage. Let's plot the current on the plot down here. So this is the current through the magnetizing inductance during the first phase from zero to dt. And it's gonna be going up linearly because we are putting a constant positive voltage across it. And it is positive because it's the same as V in. So there's a pull that's our polarity over the inductor, and so our slope of the current is going to be Vi divided by L. Now let's look at when the switch is off. So we have that current that was flowing through the inductor. It can't instantaneously stop. So current has to be flowing through that magnetizing inductor, and it can't go through the switch anymore because it's off. So the only place that it can go is through the transformer to the output side. So current has to be going in this loop here on the primary side. And notice that the current is going out of the dot on the primary side, so it's going to be going into the dot on the secondary side. So let's see where that current's going to flow. It's going to follow that direction. Oh, the diode is in the right direction, so we can go through the diode, and it can go into the capacitor, and it can also make the loop through the resistor which is our load. So we do have current flow on through the coupled inductor in the second part. So what is the voltage over the inductor? Well, we have to look at both sides of the transformer. So we know that the output voltage, the secondary side voltage is the output voltage, V out, because the diode is on and we're assuming it's ideal. So that voltage matches. And now we have to follow the dot convention so the primary side will have a flip polarity relative to that. And so we have a negative to positive. And the voltage is going to be affected by the turns ratio, and it's a V out divided by N. So that's a voltage that's over the magnetizing inductance, and it's the flip polarity from the previous phase. So now we're going to have a negative V out over N over the magnetizing inductance. So if we draw that on the plot down here, our slope will be negative V out divided by N, then divided by L. So now we want to find the voltage relation based on how the system operates during the on and the off time. And we want to look at the magnetizing inductor current. And so we're going to start with the inductor equation. 
we have V equals L delta I delta T, because we're dealing with two static states, we can transform that into just solving for delta I. So we get delta I equals V divided by L times dt. Let's plug in that equation for when S is on. So delta I on will be equal to the input voltage divided by L times dt. Now let's look for when the switch is off. And so delta I off will be equal to V out divided by N divided by L times 1 minus D times T. Now we apply the average steady state assumption, and that means that the amount of ripple that we go up has to exactly equal the amount of ripple that comes down. So the different, the delta I going up and delta I coming down have to match. So we can write this as delta I on plus delta I off equals zero. Now we can plug in these values, substitute them in, and we'll get vi divided by ldt minus v out over n divided by l, 1 minus d times t. That is equal to zero. We get some nice cancellations, the l's and t's, and we want to solve for v out by itself. So we can move that over to the other side and then write those terms again. Then we can take that equation and just put everything on one side and put V out by itself. So we'll get V out equals V in times N, the terms ratio, times D and then divided by 1 minus D. So this is our output input voltage relationship that depends on N, the turns ratio, and D, the duty ratio. In summary, we have the flyback converter. When the switch is on, we are getting current through the magnetizing inductance and through the output capacitor, but not through the coupled inductor, the ideal transform part of the coupled inductor. When it's off, that current continues to flow, but through the transformer to the output side. Using power balance, we can look at the magnetizing current, the triangle wave as it goes up and back down, and use those two segments to balance the equations and then derive the voltage relation from the output to the input, which is shown in the box here. That's the flyback converter. There you go.